It's episode 49. I loved recording this. Joseph has so much energy. I ended up simply listening myself. Fancy creating a funny ad to get millions of views and converting that traffic into sales? This is the pod for you. Joseph Wilkins founded and grew Funny Sales Videos, where he and his team create refreshingly entertaining sales videos that turn viewing into buying. His campaigns are extremely successful, previously worked with the likes of Google, LinkedIn, McDonald's, Chevrolet, and many other mega brands. With two decades of experience, hundreds of millions of TV and online views, and hundreds of millions of dollars in track sales, Joseph has developed an eight simple steps any business can follow to boost online sales, and he shares it with us today. Please enjoy the episode, and thanks for being a fab listener. Support me by subscribing and telling your friends. Welcome to the Johnny Ross Audio Experience. I'm Johnny Ross, founder and digital marketing strategist of Fleet Marketing. Each podcast, I'll be bringing you an expert to inspire you, to give you some great business growth takeaways, and to get you thinking about marketing and the bigger picture of how businesses can improve, adapt, and grow. I look forward to sharing this with you on each podcast. So here we go. Hello and welcome. We are live on LinkedIn. We're live on YouTube. We are live on the Facebook group as well. Uh, If you're listening, you're on our podcast. Uh, Welcome if you're live with us. Uh, Joseph, Joseph Wilkins, uh, how are you? I'm great. Good to uh, be on the show, Johnny. Yeah, thanks for joining us. You're over in uh, Utah, um, but um, originally from London. I am, yeah. In, in fact, I, I was expecting to speak to the famous Jonathan Ross, but then I see it's Johnny <laughs> Ross. I'm a bit, bit disappointed. Yeah. No, Are I'm you kidding. disappointed? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's great to have you and uh, very excited to be talking to you about uh, video, funny video, sales videos. Uh, and uh, and it's really good that you're taking time out for this. We're going to be uh, talking about the uh, eight steps to creating funny sales videos. Uh, you've written uh, uh, an ebook which is uh, downloadable, but we're going to go into that today and sort of inspire people and make people think about some of the ways to uh, to to if they wanted to create a funny viral video, some of the things that they need to consider. But you worked with some big brands. I mean, you've done some. You were, were you in TV originally, or, or- yeah? Yeah, some I, I TV mean, background, and and I think my just quickly telling you my story will maybe perk up the ears of some of your listeners and make Definitely. them think think about why should I even be doing something different? Whether that's whether it's funny or or whether there's another avenue. The whole point of what I'm going to be talking about today is how do you stand out from your competitors? How do you how do you differentiate yourself in today's world of, you know, people scrolling through their Facebook feeds or YouTube channels? How do you stand out and really cut through the clutter? And so so for the past 20 years I've basically been doing sales videos, right? In one form or another. So we started out doing television infomercials, you know, back in the day when you would be surfing through the channels at 2 a.m. We were the company that made those 30-minute long infomercials. Wow. Our very first infomercial was the Little Giant Ladder. It did over $200 million in sales. Right. Uh, that's the one that basically helped me quit my nine to five and start this company. It wasn't called Funny Sales Videos. Um, but for about 10, 15 years, that's pretty much where our focus was on long form and short form television commercials. Um, problem is, I don't know about you, Johnny, I don't watch TV anymore. I, I can't remember the last time I watched live TV, other than maybe sports, news, if there was something that really, you know, I, I wanted to watch. But because of that, most of our customers started seeing their results going down and down and down. They were spending the same amount of money to produce these commercials, um, even spending the same amount to broadcast them to a smaller and smaller audience. And so about 15 years ago, our clients basically came to us and said, you know, we we don't want to do TV anymore. We've got to figure out something else. Where are our where are our viewers going? And the obvious answer is online. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've got teenage kids and uh 
that I, I, <laughs> I walked in, they, they had a few friends around the other day and they walked and they've got YouTube on the, on the big TV screen. And I'm yeah. like, just so you know, guys, we've got like Netflix, we've got Amazon prime. We've got, no, we just watch YouTube. And yeah. uh, so, so not even, not even Netflix, not even, they, but, but anyway, I get your point. We've totally moved away from normal TV. Yeah. I mean, my, my kids can't even conceive the thought of waiting for your show to come on. No, it's just a different world. The problem is you can't just transplant what you used to run on television onto social media and think you're going to get the same results. Um, the reason is most people, they're going onto social media to be entertained. They're going on social media to have a break from work. They're going to kill a few minutes and they're looking for engaging content. And so if you just serve them up a TV commercial, it's going to be completely different than where than what they're expecting to, to consume there. And so the trick is the closer that you can get to creating content that looks and feels like the reason why people have come there in the first place, the more likely you are to disrupt them, grab their attention and ultimately connect with them. So that's when we started looking at companies. In fact, just before the show, you mentioned Dollar Shave Club. You know, we looked at what companies like the Dollar Shave Club and Squatty Potty and Poopery, Purple Mattress, all these videos that had gone quote unquote viral. And we'll talk in a bit, bit about how they actually didn't go organically viral. Um, but the point is they felt fun. They felt shareable. And because of that, they got, millions and millions and millions of dollars in sales. Yeah. And so we've made a conscious effort about five years ago to launch a new spin-off of our company, funnysalesvideos.com, and, and learn how to create these kinds of videos. And to give you a compare and contrast, before we did that, we would actually tell our clients when they asked for a funny video that we didn't do that. Because you got to be, you got to do it right. And hopefully the things that I'll talk about today will help your listeners to, if they want to try to do it themselves, at least give them the best shot of doing it right. Because if you do it without what I'll talk about, you'll end up looking silly and nothing sinks a brand faster than looking silly. And so, you know, a lot it, of, because of, it's got to be funny. You yeah, can't just, exactly. you can't just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't so just make of, it funny. A lot of big businesses are terrified of trying to do funny because they'll end up looking silly. But actually, if you're if you're not disruptive, you'll just be boring, which is even worse because you'll get ignored. So to compare and contrast, for the first 15 years of our existence, we on online, our biggest video that we ever did had maybe a hundred thousand views. That was our biggest um, uh, view count on YouTube. When we launched funny sales videos and we spent about a year recruiting and finding the right writers, and we'll talk in a bit about how we did that and how you could do that. Um, but our very first video after launching funnysalesvideos.com was a super niche market, very, very obscure product. And so people say, well, you know, who's funny good for? It works for anyone as long as you're relevant. But our very first video campaign between three videos, we racked out over 7 million views. Wow. And more importantly, over a half a million dollars in sign up subscriptions to this SaaS software, essentially, is what it was. Um, fast forward to today, this is my last point. Our biggest campaign is close to hitting 100 million views and tens of millions of dollars in sales. So that's kind of why your listeners should, should pay attention is because in 20 years of doing this, nothing has even come close to the kinds of results that we're now seeing when we go through these eight steps with our clients. Wow. I mean, that's, that's serious numbers, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it rivals what those original videos that I mentioned, Dollar Shave Club, you know, it rivals the numbers that they were seeing. But I have to I have to give huge props out to to the Harmon brothers. Um, those are the guys that produce Squatty Potty, Poopery, Purple Mattress. Um, about a year after we launched FunnySalesVideos.com, they launched an online university where they taught a lot of what we use today. And so, 
you know, I, I'd give a shout out to anyone that's interested in learning a lot more about this to go to harmanbrothersuniversity.com and learn what they taught. And I've been through all of their training. So what we're saying is, is humor is powerful because people come to social media to be entertained. Yes, exactly. And they come and have a laugh. And that's really important because so many people still believe that they can just go onto social media and start selling their words. Yeah. It, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I mean, I am skipping ahead here, but um, one of the things that interests me is you were talking about, you know, a 30 minute TV commercial. What sort of length of video Great are we question. talking about here? Great question. So, a lot of the digital marketing agencies will be told by their reps at YouTube and Facebook, you know, keep your videos 10, 15 seconds, the shorter, the better. And that's true if you don't have the creativity to earn more of my attention. Now, now you mentioned it earlier, Netflix is living proof that we still have attention spans for long form content. And so the short answer to your question is most of our videos are around three to four minutes long. Now, that's the hero version, the full version. We can talk in a minute about how we do multiple versions of shorter versions of that for retargeting. But our top of funnel video, in other words, our first impression video to cold traffic is typically about three and a half minutes long. But it's all about grabbing their attention entertaining them, then for, spoon feeding them a little bit of, you know, marketing content, then grabbing their attention, entertaining them again. So it's kind of a, almost a symphony of joke, entertaining sales, joke, entertainment sales. Every 15 to 30 seconds, you repeat that so that you're constantly grabbing their attention and keeping it while you're selling them. And um uh, and bearing in mind that, you know, having a look at TikTok, having a look at YouTube shorts, less than a minute content, what you're saying is the hero video, three or four minutes, but you you might then make, you might then edit and create something yes. that's under a minute yes. to potentially be included on things like YouTube shorts. Exactly. And, and we also do, you know, so when we do our productions, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Last week, um, we actually two weeks ago, we did a big production where we had like seven or eight actors and we rented out this very expensive location. While we've got all of that in one place, we also like to do a lot of follow-up, not necessarily funny, but retargeting call to action videos. So your first impression video is the funny video, but then you may remind them over on TikTok or on Instagram or on YouTube short that the sale that you talked about in your big video is still going on. Or maybe you're retargeting them with a new sale. The holidays are coming up. You know, what better gift than to, to buy right now? And there's still a 20% off if you click below. So it's not all funny. The funny is grabbing their attention and, and in a lot of instances taking them all the way to conversion to the sale but with any funnel you're going to get a ton of people that drop out of the funnel so retarget them with other videos that this that's the same character the same basically story but you're just reminding them you know that that seven touch point right that everyone needs before they make a decision so in this pod we're going to be covering the eight simple t uh, simple steps on how to produce a funny sales video. Um, if you're watching, if you're listening right now and you've got questions for Joseph, please do ask them. Um, one of the things I'm wondering is who, what kinds of companies are a good fit um, for these kinds of campaigns before we get into how to yeah. make them, which we're going to get onto very shortly. What, you know, if companies are listening right now, owners of businesses, what's the sort of the, the best fit for this type of campaign? Well, it's a kind of a smart aleck answer, but I say only companies that have customers who are humans. Like everyone has the desire to be entertained. It doesn't matter is the answer. We, we've done videos for mortgage companies. We just did a video last week. I'm holding the product in here for a, for a beef energy stick, right? So it really doesn't matter. We, our biggest campaign was for a laundry detergent. That's the most boring subject you can think of but we made it funny. And so whether it's B2B, 
B2C, lead generation, instant sales, subscriptions, as long as you're relevant and you talk about the problem that your product solves, whether you're talking to a CXO or a teenager, the principles are the same. So just to reiterate, because you did mention it there, B2B services absolutely fit as oh, long yeah. as your customers are humans. In fact, I say the more uh, uh, boring may be the wrong word, but the more, uh, you know, the Dry. more that you, yeah, the more that you think your product isn't a good fit for a funny sales video, the more likely that you are to be even more effective and disruptive because nobody else in your industry is going to think about doing it. It's all about being different. Okay. I'm bought in to needing <laughs> a funny sales video. Okay. Step one. Of Step one is marketing 101. Do your research. It's the most boring part of, this, of the process. But I use the analogy, would you ever, Johnny, write a letter, walk to the post box, and then decide who to address it to? But that's nice. what most nice. people do. In their marketing, they 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 don't even have an idea in their mind of who they're writing this script for. And so the more specific you can get in creating your ideal customer avatar, the more you're going to connect with that person. Now, some businesses will say, well, my, my audience is so broad, how could I ever do that? Well, you at least start with your ideal in the center of the target. And then maybe you need to write to a little bit of a broader audience as you, you know, expand that con those concentric circles. But who is your ideal, most profitable, most likely to respond customer and literally create, write a little outline of who she is or he is or what is what are their day like what are their pain points ultimately what are the problems that could come up in their day and then when you speak to that you're more likely to hit them and the the biggest tip i can tell you and this is one i stole from the Harmon brothers is go out and read a ton of customer reviews that were written by that person now ideally that's your customer reviews but if you don't have customer reviews online, and I say at least 100, if you don't have reviews, your competitor probably does. It's the same customer, whether they wrote it about you or about your competitor. So go read them and create a spreadsheet of what the biggest topics are that come up over and over again. So whether it's, you know, it solved this problem or it solved that problem or, you know, it's it, it's done this for my life or it's done this for my business. And again, these are generalities. Every niche is going to be much more specific. But you'd be amazed at how many customers that I deal with when I come back to them and say, here's our spreadsheet. We've been through this process for you. This is what people are actually saying about your product. And it's not what they thought they were creating a product to solve the problems of. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I absolutely. I mean, first of all, I love the analogy of you know, would you write a letter and then walk to the post box and you know, without actually thinking who's it going to? I think that's brilliant. Not heard that before. Uh, and um, uh, and and yeah, I mean, going to a competitor and having a look at the reviews and 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 the sort of things that you're looking to to get out of that. What are the, the you know. What so is it that you're trying to understand? What I'm typically looking for is five key selling points, right? In a, in a three minute plus video, you've got time to hit on multiple benefits that your product creates. Uh, now that's a prioritized list. So the number one benefit is going to get mentioned four or five times maybe in the video. And the number five benefit may only get mentioned once. But these are repeating patterns of things that people are saying I like this product or service because. And so top three, four, five top selling points. And then also what you're looking for is common threads of, of reasons why people don't buy or reasons why people decided not to, product, to buy your product or service. Because an unresolved concern, if it's voiced enough, will never be overcome with a, with a sales video. So if your product's too expensive, you got to come out and address that or else no one's going to buy it. you got to address why it's more expensive and why it's end up going to end up 
saving you money because you only have to buy one of ours compared to three of our competitors that are cheap and are going to break or whatever it is, right? There's, there's, if there's multiple people in the reviews mentioning it, then you need to hit it head on. Now, if there's only one person or two people, you don't want to bring up reasons not to buy unless they're valid and, and you know, thought of by multiple people. So ultimately in the research, I'm looking for three to five key selling points that I know people need to be hit over the head with before they'll buy. And I'm also looking for are there reasons why people aren't buying that I need to address? Because ultimately this video what I'm trying to do is go from zero knowledge about my product or service to sold in three or four minutes, right? Whether that sold is fill out a lead gen form, click here to buy now. I just yep. need to get them over the hump of not knowing anything about me, connecting with me, and then doing something about it. Yep. And that's all done in the research phase. So that's step one, discovery, yep. Yep. research, and... Um... Uh, and 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 for clarity, it's the five top selling points, the two objections, uh, and really knowing your audience, knowing your competition. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and I'll just add one more thing. A lot of the time, when our when our videos go out and we start getting you know millions of views, we also get tens of thousands of comments. And the number one comment that I crave that we see regularly is people saying, "That's me in the video." That, you know, that person is just like me or, or I really connected with that. I'd love to be friends with that person. And that's because we're literally stealing lines that you've written in the comment and put it yeah. in the script. So yeah, it's yeah. the customer talking. Yeah. The closer yeah. you can get to that kind of connection, the more, you know, the more you're going to get the, the, the end benefit of where you're trying to get to. Step two. Brainstorming. Creating a funny sales video. Brainstorming. Yeah. And it's to begin with, Johnny, it's all about quantity, not quality. In other words, you got to throw out as many crazy ideas as possible that are terrible in order to get to the one, two, three or four really good ideas. And when I say brainstorm ideas, all I'm talking about are who is the main character in your video and what's the problem that they have. Right. And so the character could be crazy, funny, you know, outlandish, or it could be, you know, very grounded that looks very much like the customer. But, you know, this is the hardest one to describe. How do we do it? But basically, it's all about a brain share over here, right? There's no one person that's creating these great scripts. We have at least 10 people that write, that write on every single project. And so it's kind of like who wants to be a millionaire the show I don't know if that's still running on TV or not but but the big the best lifeline to use was always ask the audience because more people contributing will give you the better ideas and so if any one person thinks that they're just a genius and go out and write a script I'd like to see it because I've never seen it like that it's always improved by throwing it past multiple people so the more people that you can have in your brain share to throw out ideas, like, you know, for example, I'll just, just cause it's sitting on my desk right here, Paleo Valley beef sticks. This is a video that we just barely shot last week. When we were brainstorming, we knew that these were, you know, not your cheapest product. It's a high quality beef stick with great ingredients that, you know, people that really care about what they're putting in the bodies, their bodies are going to uh, relate to and buy. And so when we brainstormed these ideas, you know, we came up with crazy things like, you know, um, marathon runners and extreme bodybuilders. And then we got to superheroes and we ended up creating a character that was a super mom. Right. So, so, so the first opening scene, she's flying in the clouds with a kid strapped to her back and, you know, he's <laughs> dying of, of fright and she's got the, all the power that she needs to be a great superhero, but also take care of her family, but ultimately fuel her super body with the super foods that are in, inside here. Now, we didn't get to that immediately. We, we went through lots of different ideas of the kind of character that should represent this product. And yours, you know, will, will determine based on what it is that you're selling. But the, the biggest thing I can tell your audience is we typically will throw out 50 bad ideas to come up with the good one. 
And if you ever think that you've come up with a great one right off the bat, you haven't. <laughs> you got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. And this applies to anything in business and, and in life generally. If you know, the more time and effort you put into coming up with ideas, the better the end result will be. And 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 just so we're clear here, the is is this where we're trying to inject the funny part, or does no. that come in later? No, this is simply who is my main character and what is their problem. Okay. So so in in my beef stick example, the main character is a super mum who fights crime at night, but during the day she's a mom and has to take care of herself. And she, if she neglects her body, she can't do those things. So that was her problem is how do I fuel my body? So you may have a, a client who's a SaaS product and they're selling a sales software and they're trying to target, I'm making this off the top of my head. They're trying good, to, good, good. they're trying to target sales managers. Well, what's their problem? Salespeople that don't do what they're supposed to do, that have to constantly stay motivated. And so there's all sorts of things that your product solves that you could then create a really funny story around. But don't worry about the funny yet. The, pro the, the, the person that you, you want as your hero character is most likely, you know, a completely frazzled, burnt out sales manager that has to manage all of these kids who are the salespeople. I mean, you could even make them real kids, toddlers, because that's how they act. I'm just brainstorming out loud here, but you can <laughs> see how it doesn't matter where, what the industry is. You've got to create something that that person will relate to. So that's step two, brainstorming. Step two of eight. Yes. Uh, so step, go ahead. Go on. No, go on. Okay, so step three is the scripting. That's where you take your character and the problem and you start fleshing it out. The first step of scripting is figuring out those marketing points that we already did in, the, in step one, but, but writing them out in a script format and then bringing in a really good storyteller, right? A writer that will take the character, take the problem and start telling a story. It's still not funny until we then come into the third step. So the first step is the marketing scripting. Second step is the storytelling. The third step is once we've got a story that's about three-ish minutes long, we have at least five professional comedy writers that we'll send that script to. And between them, they'll bring it to life. They'll add jokes in. They'll add a witty line here. They'll rewrite something. Now, these aren't good storytellers these are people who can just read a story and say it'd be so much better if we had a joke here or you know let's be a little irreverent there and you, you want to push the boundaries far enough that it's disruptive that it's memorable but not too far that you make it offensive for two reasons number one you don't want to turn off your customers but number two you don't want to get banned on facebook and have an ad that you can't actually run so you need to be careful that it's you know, somewhat family friendly comedy, but intelligent comedy. And it's, so it's, it's got to be on brand, hasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's a huge point. A lot of the time I, as the, I, I typically work as the creative director that's overseeing all of these people. You, so you have to have one person that's true to the original uh, goal of the project and if a writer puts in a joke that may make me want to pee my pants, but doesn't further the sale, it has to go. It's not about making people laugh. It's about creating sales. And if one comes before the other, you have to, you have to go back to the true purpose of the, of the video, which is to create sales. Interesting. So we'll spend about two months creating the script from yeah. the brain, from the brainstorming all the way through to the comedy writers. And if your listeners are thinking, well, where do I find good comedy writers? I'll tell you. Go to sites like Fiverr.com. Go to sites like Upwork. There are many, many very talented comedy writers that are, you know, maybe have a day job and freelance at night. And sites like that will connect you with them. I also will go to comedy clubs and listen to comedians and pick out the ones that I think are really clever or watch them online and reach out to them. You'd be amazed at how many really talented people are really starving artists and would love a side gig working for you, you know, pay them a decent rate. They're not terribly expensive, but you get what you pay for. 
So I will typically go through about five comedy or at least five comedy writers, and I'm using a shared document so everyone can see each other's comments. And that way, one comedy writer may write a joke that starts out being funny but doesn't quite deliver, and another co comedian will improve on it. So it's all about a collaboration. We're not physically in the same room by the magic of the internet. It's all a big virtual writer's room. And is that just out of curiosity? Is that something that uh, that they're, they're 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 clearly very comfortable with? And is that is that how normal you know comedy is written for in a collaborative way anyway? Yes, exactly. If you think about shows like Saturday Night Live, if, I mean to me that's the biggest um, stress that could be that every week you've got to come up with I don't know how long is the show thirty minutes or an hour I don't know but they they literally lock the writers in a room 20 or so of the writers for a whole week and they're bouncing ideas off each other constantly you know and some of them are great and some of them are not so great but that's how they do it and so we do the same thing we're collaborating and bouncing ideas off each other the whole time so we've uh, discovered our target audience we've yep. discovered what their problems what they want we've uh, we've then thought about all the different ideas the brainstorming step two step three is we've got to write the script yeah uh, and we need to uh, get some uh, uh comedians to to then add some uh funniness <laughs> is yep, that that's, word that's step four <laughs> oh, okay step four comedy so I'm, I'm i'm stepping ahead so come on to step four then so, yeah, so step four, so we, I've kind of already gone Oh, so we covered it. it. Sorry, we covered it. Yeah, step four is taking the script that we wrote in step three and making it funny, and that that's step four. And that's, you know, I always tell people there are some steps of this that you can do yourself, and, and you probably should if you don't have a huge budget. Writing your own stuff isn't one of them. The, the two things that I would say don't try to do yourself, hire the professionals, is the writing and the acting. Everything else you can get away with. Obviously, you're going to get the best results if you hire professionals for every step. But too many people try to write their own stuff and too many people try to act in their own video. Now, you mentioned Dollar Shave Club. A lot of people think that was just a, the CEO of a company that decided to do his own video. What they don't realize is for 10 years, he worked as an improv comedian on Broadway. So he had that background. Yeah. Now, there are videos that, you know, don't have to be funny. And I do encourage people to be in your own videos and interview your customers. But don't try this kind of a video as a, you know, a, a homespun, user-generated content type of video. So that's step four is making it funny. Step five is the production. That's where the rubber meets the road. You've got a script. You've, you've gone through it multiple, multiple, multiple times. It's as good as you think it's going to get. It's never going to be perfect. But once you feel like, you know, you, you read this through and it's connecting, you've tested it on people, customer avatars that, you know, maybe your, your best customers, you've sent the script to them, you've asked for feedback, you've, I mean, we stopped the UPS man in, in here in the studio and say, will you, will you read this script? Do you think it's funny? <laughs> what, what do you get? What don't you get? You know, quizzing as many people as possible. Um, but once you've got there, you got to get into production and as a guy that's run a video production studio for 20 years, you'd think that I would say the most important thing is to get the best cameras and the best lights, the best sound. It's not. The most important thing of production, like I mentioned, is to cast the right actor. Interesting. Okay. And I'll tell you, a lot of people don't realize that this part is actually free to do. So let me explain what we do and how you can do it too. On any video, we will look at about 100 actors before we pick the right one. People say, that's crazy. Wow. So the way that we do that is we'll go to three, two or three agencies, acting agencies. Uh, we're here in Utah and we have, you know, most cities within a, a decent drive have, you know, acting agencies. We'll go onto their website. You don't want to typecast in your mind what your character looks like yet because you're looking for the right performer, not the right look. So what I do is I'll go through and I'll look at, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pictures of actors, then I'll watch their demo reels and I'll select out of that hundred, I'll select about 20 of them that I think could do the job. 
and I'll send them a portion of the script. It's called a side. I send it to the agent and I say, you know, here's you know five people from your agency that want to audition. Now they're going to audition from home, especially post COVID. Everyone has a setup like what we're doing today, um, and actors will will record and email you an audition. So now I've got 20 auditions from people that I've personally picked out. I'll watch through all of them. And then I'll pick out my top three or four to do a live callback. So a second audition where I'm like we're doing now. And that way I can test to see, you know, can you say that line faster? Can you slow it down? Can you put the emphasis on this? I'm looking for, can they perform under pressure, under direction, because anyone can do an audition in the comfort of their home and pick the best of 20 takes, but how are they live? So once I've gone through that process, and a lot of the time I'll have the client on the Zoom with me, so we're together we're making that decision, um, because second to the script, picking the actor is the most important part of the success of your video. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cast our actor. Sometimes we'll bring them into the studio, but most of the time we just do it all remotely. But then obviously the more that you can produce this to look professional, the more it's going to look different than everything else that people are scrolling through on their LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter feed, whatever it is. And so, you know, yes, hiring a professional production company, if you're really serious about the kinds of returns that some of our videos have got, you know, millions of dollars in sales, it's worth spending the extra money to produce it right. I mean, if you've just spent two months producing a script, what's your time worth? To go film it on an iPhone kind of seems silly. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but, but if that's all you've got and if, that, if that's all you're able to do, it's still going to be better if you follow th those steps. So that's step five is producing, casting the right actor, getting the right film crew to do it right. And, and I could spend a lot more time on each of these steps, but people can download the ebook and there's a lot more in there that we're, than we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I can see that you go into locations and uh, the and some of the equipment, etc. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, as you say, um, time limits and and this is fully downloadable, which we'll put a link on at the end as well. Uh, yeah. So we're on. Uh, that was five of eight. We're yep. now on to step six: go editing. For it. Editing. So you've heard said multiple times, comedy is about timing, right? You've heard that before, and editing is all about timing. You could have the funniest joke that's scripted that the actor delivers and the difference between putting a cut here or letting it play out could be the difference between it being funny and it falling flat. So a good <laughs> editor understands how to make comedy time even better than when, when it was filmed. The other thing you mentioned it earlier, how long should a video be? Our videos are not... The whole point of the video isn't to make it short, it's to make it engaging. So if you watch some of our videos at funnysalesvideos.com, you'll notice that we literally never let people stop for a breath. Literally, because we know that that's an opportunity for people to get bored and tune out. Now, we know that people are going to stop watching our video. In fact, most of our videos, you know, maybe have a 5% watch through rate. But 5% of 100 million people is a huge amount. And if we didn't edit them the way that we do, that could be down as low as 1%. So we are constantly, from beginning to end, we are not letting you get bored. So we're, we're cutting out breaths. We're speeding things up. We're overlapping people talking. We're throwing visuals at you as you're hearing audio. 80% um, of people are, are watching our videos without the sound on. So visually, we're throwing in graphics. We're burning in the subtitles. We're not letting YouTube or Facebook automatically do that because that's a disaster. We're having them professionally graphic design, you know, no more than seven or eight words on the screen at any one time. There's all these rules that we use to make the most of the edit, to make, to constantly be improving it from step to step to ultimately keep more people's attention, educate them, and get them into the sales funnel. So then most people are amazed when I tell them this. We, For any given video, we will edit 32 different versions wow. to A, B, C, D, split test them to see which version performs the best. So what we do is we script 
shoot and edit three completely different opening hooks. And I actually did a video vlog on, on LinkedIn, if, if your listeners want to take a look, where I showed the difference between the exact same video with the different opening 10 seconds, three different openings. Version one got a 1.9 return on ad spend. So for every dollar that our clients spent on advertising, they're getting $1.9 in return. Kind of a break-even campaign. Same video, version two of the hook got a 2.7 return on ad spend, and version three got a 4.1 return on ad spend. So quadrupling your money. We would never have known which version to lead with if we hadn't have filmed those three different versions and then let Facebook determine which one was getting the better conversion rate. We do the same thing with the offer. So offer one may be, you know, buy one, get one free. Offer two may be get 50% off and offer, sorry, offer two, maybe get 50% off and offer three, maybe, you know, click here for a money saving offer. So we're constantly testing. We're doing long versions. We're doing shorter versions. The longer versions, interestingly enough, have pretty much 80% of the time will outperform the shorter versions because we're telling more of a story. But in the retargeting, those shorter versions are critical. So anyway, we edit multiple different versions to make sure that we're not just guessing which version is going to make the most money. And a, and a really interesting point you made there is 80% of the videos of, of people that watch your videos watch it in silence. Yes. And so our goal, is, our goal is for the first 10 wow. seconds to throw enough at you that you will turn the sound on. So it's got to be visual. So wow. most of our creativity goes into that opening five to 10 seconds because the rest of it is a waste of money if people don't watch past that first opening hook. Yeah. So step seven is testing. So this is the time to, to, to drop the bomb that most of our video views are not organic. It's not about creating a viral, organic viral sales video because that's not a business that you can count on. You know, if we were to do our best and create a video and just put it up there on Facebook and then hope that it goes viral, I mean, that's just that that's silly. It's not repeatable. It's not predictable. It's not something that you can say, OK, if I spend this much, I can get this much in return. Our ad, our vid videos are all ads that are run based on paid media. So when we put a dollar on promoting this on YouTube or promoting this on Facebook, like I said, in my, in my other version, we get $4.1 back. That's something that's repeatable that we can predict, that we can continually control. And so the only way to do that is to test out every phase of that sales funnel. And again, read a lot more of this in the ebook. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Testing thumbnails, testing copy, testing which platform you're running on, testing which version of the video that it's going on. And, and then the start, final step eight is just forget viral, forget vo going viral. I, I talk about it. It's like building a, a, a vending machine that's full of $100 bills that cost $20 to use. How many times <laughs> are you going to want to use that machine? <laughs> That's how, how your listeners need to think about advertising. And these videos are the difference between, you know, getting a break even. So spending $100 to get $100 back and spending $20 to get $100 back. These videos, people will actually watch them. People will actually comment, like, share, but ultimately convert because you're telling a story that grabs their attention. But once you've got the attention, they finally say, actually, I do have that problem. Actually, that does look like it might solve my problem. Actually, they're speaking my language in a way that I can give them another minute of my time. And by the time we've taken them from zero to three minutes and continually hitting them over the head with these principles that we've talked about, the engagement rate in 20 years, I've never seen anything that performs nearly as well for my clients. And that's why that's all we do these days. We don't do any TV. We don't do any regular boring, you know, sales videos. We just do these funny sales videos because they work so well. Well, I mean, now, you know, now that you've talked it through and understanding the thoroughness of the process and the detail in the process, I can see how polishing it can make all the difference absolutely and and and, and 
and in terms of you know i think the biggest problem that people have is right at the beginning when they think about you know well, i'll create a video everyone's doing video i need to create a video you know i i need to go off and create a video the what they are thinking in terms of the return is nowhere near enough about the size they should be thinking yes I think. I think this is the problem. So I think they're thinking, well, we'll put something out on social media. We'll spend a bit of money. We'll put it on the homepage. We'll put it on social media. Uh, this will just get a bit more engagement, get a few more leads in. What they need to be thinking is flipping on its head and saying, right, we want, you know, uh, we want, we want 200, uh, you know, 100 million, uh, a, a few million uh, turnover or whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is. You know. Yep. What were you saying? That hundreds of millions of dollars. Is that what you said? So our, our biggest campaign now has over, I think it's nearly right 100 million 100, views, 100 million views, and which has turned into roughly, I, I don't have a finite number, but it's, it's millions, millions, and millions, millions of, of millions. dollars. I mean, yes. literally so, we have so, videos that have transformed companies. So let's say, you know, so, so in fact, what we should be thinking is, you know, this isn't going to bring in a few leads. This is going to bring in $10 million. Yes. So for and us to bring in for a long time. So, so for us to bring in ten million dollars, well, we're going to have to invest in that, aren't we? Exactly. And, and that's what I'm hearing, and and it's that, and it's that whole thing of really uh, um, owning what this could do. Yes, I, I tell my clients, you're one campaign away from transforming the way that you've ever done sales before. Yeah, for sure. And we've seen that time and time again. The last campaign that we did, within two weeks, we completely sold the company out of their inventory. They had to they had to shut the whole thing down and order container loads from China because they sold out. What would it do to your business if you were to completely sell out of everything, whether it's a service or a, you know your capability to fulfill on that service? What would it do to your company? If you were to create a campaign that just completely overwhelmed you with prospects, which isn't going to happen if you think I've just used this one actor <laughs> and I'm going to write the com comedy myself, right? <laughs> and I'm going to film it on an iPhone. <laughs> if it, if it hasn't happened to you yet, you got to do something radically different. Yeah. Where do we uh, download the ebook? It's really easy, funnysalesvideos.com. I'll put it in the show notes as well. Um, Joseph, whereabouts do you hang out online? Which platform, if so, if people were looking to maybe speak to you, contact you, is there a particular social media platform that you hang out more on? Oh, that's I've been so busy lately. I've neglected social media almost completely, but I'd probably say LinkedIn is where people should contact me. But please don't just connect. Send me a message. Tell me you saw me on this show or heard me and then i'll know it's not a spammer because i'm constantly inundated with those and i just ignore them yeah that's fair enough but um, you can also you can also just go to funny sales .com and fill out the lead on the home page yeah which is a chat yeah which is what i'm suggesting really because i've seen the the uh the ebook it is absolutely full of value you've you've only covered you know a fraction of it on on here today uh highly recommend and and also go and watch some of the videos i mean <laughs> i mean you know i was i was in fits of laughter go go buy some of my customers products <laughs> well even better <laughs> uh joseph it's been brilliant i've really enjoyed chatting to you uh i really appreciate your time um yeah. And, um, and, and thanks, you know, I just want to thank everyone for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, and please do go to funnysalesvideos.com, have a look, download the ebook and let us both know what you think. We'd love some feedback. Yeah. So, um, for, for now, that's all. So thanks so much. And we'll see you soon, Joseph. Take care. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Johnny Ross audio experience. Thanks so much for joining me. If you want to continue the conversation, head over to my website, fleek.marketing, or find me on LinkedIn. That's all for today. Please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, tag me in your social media posts, and please leave me a review on iTunes. It will make a huge difference for me. I will see you soon.